Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the world paranormal news with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum with the Paranormal and World Changes News. As Horace returned, two people recorded a winged creature that looked like it was in flames descending from the sky. This was on January 5th. A couple witnessed a bizarre incident in the sky over Mount of Colorado. According to the couple, they were on a terrace sharing their time together when they observed some strange lights coming down from the west. Both of them immediately ran into the house They get their phones and take pictures of what looks like a winged uh, being on fire. President hopeful Pete Wittengig weighs in on UFOs. It's very unlikely we're alone in the universe, he says. Also, Wittengig takes the safe approach in saying we're not the only life forms around, but he doesn't think we'll see concrete evidence of it on Earth. However, that doesn't mean we should stop watching the skies. Also in the news, there's been, also in the news, mystery swarms again of these giant drones that keep appearing in the night sky in Colorado. Now, something strange has been happening throughout Colorado for several days. It's in eastern Colorado at night. Now, since the week of Christmas, these giant drones measuring up to six feet across have been spotted in the sky at night, sometimes in swarms as large as 30. And it's been throughout northeastern Colorado and even down into Nebraska. And, it, it, again, investigation keeps going on why, what are these, and who's responsible. Also, Google Earth. A user of Google Earth has discovered a gigantic, mysterious, disc-shaped object sticking out of the Antarctica ice. The weird gray structure is Antarctica's latest odd finding. If you zoom in on there's a picture. If you zoom in on the thing, it seems to be a massive semicircle sticking out of the cliff face. And in the video, it's clear that the structure is not natural. Also, a report on UFOs from New York State. According to the reports, 2019 was a big year for UFO sightings across the United States. Now, New York reportedly saw a 52% increase in reports from 2018. So what's with the big increase of this last year? Is it because there's more people out there filming? We don't know, but it's a big increase, 52%. Next news break at the top of the hour. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with our host, Gary Anderson. Oh boy, I was caught with tea in my hand and I had to put it down and quickly run across the other side of the studio. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about, with Rob, about UFOs, that some of them could be very deadly to us. James, what do you think? 
I've been saying that for a long time. You know, another thing that I've been saying, not just the beings that are in these crafts could be dangerous to us, but the environmental effect that these craft that are, if they're running by a nuclear power or, or element 115, whatever it is, that's got to leave some kind of residue that's got to be harmful to our environment and to our animals and to the vegetation and into our air that we breathe into the oceans. Yeah, even to us. Well, let's get Rob on the show here. So that's what I'm doing right now. And, uh, well, to an automatic voice oh, message well, we got his answering machine. That not that strange? That happens all the time. It does. I can feel your anxiety going up when that happens. I know. So we'll give it a, a try again. <sighs> that or people forget. I mean, what happens if we get a guess at that? Eh, let's see. I think we got him on here now. Hey. Four, zero, four, eight, oh, oh, we don't want to give that out. Eight. Okay. Not available. <laughs> that, well, the he, tone. he's not there. Well, Rob, where are you? <laughs> Calling Rob Shelsky. Yes. Where are you? Well. Where did you go? I don't know. Yeah, it's not, it's not Skype. Skype's working anyway. I can hear it ringing, so. Yeah. Well, we'll, yeah, give I don't it, know. we'll give it another try. We can certainly yeah. do that. Maybe. Let's see. Okay. I just... No, I... Well, we'll give it a try. Hello? We're looking for Rob. This is he. Okay. Well, this is Tim O'Brien with the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> I'm calling about your tax return, uh, 1943... Line 17 on uh, Section 8. Oh, and what would you like <laughs> to know about it? Uh, did you do it or did you not do it? I did it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did it because I don't even know what I'm talking about. You're listening to uh, Rob here. We're going to be talking about deadly UFOs and his book about deadly UFOs. Why don't you tell the listeners, you've been on here a lot, but let's, let's go ahead and tell the new listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, I'm a fringe element. Um, I'm unstable mentally. <laughs> <laughs> we, aren't we all? <laughs> no, uh, I'm a writer and a researcher. I have been investigating UFOs now since about, oh, I'd say about 2003, 2004. I have done field research. I was a MUFON field investigator. I have traveled abroad investigating UFOs, and I've written quite a few books about them. Well, what made you decide to write a book about deadly UFOs? Well, the more, it's a funny thing. You know, when I first got into the whole UFO phenomenon, I just thought of it as being uh, intriguing and interesting, and I'd love to see a UFO, and I'd love to meet an alien and shake hands. But the more I got into it, the more I researched it, the more I began to realize there was a very negative side effect to it, and this was that UFOs are dangerous. And they are dangerous much more often than people realize. They cause injuries. They cause death. They um, uh, damage property. And uh, there's a lot of people disappearing. And how do we account for that if there are space brothers? So that's when I decided to write the book uh, based on those investigations. Well, Rob, don't you think they're here to save mankind and they give off orbs and all this stuff to make you feel good? Oh, sure. I'm glad, uh, glad to hear. I'm sure they're here to serve man. Yeah. <laughs> I just make want to serve this with a nice, um, you know, Bernays sauce. But, uh, no, I, I, I don't think there are space brothers. I really don't. There may be more than one species. They, some may not be so bad. But overall, we can't count on that. Not when you see what's going on and has been going on, not just for decades, but actually for several centuries. Um, the number of disappeared on this planet is phenomenal. Every single year, permanently disappeared. The uh, number of deaths from UFOs are far greater and goes back much farther than people realize. So, uh, no, I don't think there are space brothers at all. I wish they were. I wish I could believe that, but I don't anymore. Well, I tell you what, have you heard of Terry Lovelace? Uh, yes, I have. You know, he's been on the show several times, and we always seem to run out of time before we even get to the end of his story but you know he was a former uh u.s attorney general you know uh you know associate or whatever they are but you know the thing is with 
scares me is his story, what happened to him. It certainly doesn't sound like they're friendly at all. It, is, it, it sounds like they don't care about us. They got some uh, uh, agenda going on what they're doing. And it, it scares it scares me because this poor guy, ever since his abduction, has to go to bed at night with a loaded gun and a flashlight next to his bed. It's, it's scary. Right, and they, they've done studies on that. And one psychiatrist said that there's an alarming rate of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, among people who have been abducted and claim to have been abducted, and also people who have interacted with UFOs in any way. So if you have PTSD, even if you don't remember the abduction and what happened to you, it's still leaving a very negative effect on people, and it affects them for the rest of their lives. They're frightened and they're scared. Well, you know, once you've been abducted, and, 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 you know, again, we can only go by like what Terry has said or Calvin Parker or a whole bunch of people. It, it, it seems like it has really messed their life up, really. because Over a million people claim to have been abducted. And, yes, it has messed their lives up. But it is, uh, and, and as bad as that is, there's, there are worse scenarios. You can die from inter, you know, UFO interactions. You can be abducted permanently. It's bad enough to be abducted and returned. But what about the people who disappear forever? And they disappear as single people. They disappear in groups. They even entire villages have disappeared. And how do we account for this? What's happening to these people? Where are they going? What are they going through? Are they being killed? We don't know. And we don't seem to have any real power over it. And I think we have to conclude that somehow our government does know something about this and either is in collusion with them or is powerless to stop them. Either scenario is really bad for us because if the government's in collusion with them, that means they're nodding their head and looking the other way as this stuff is happening. And if they're not in collusion with them and are powerless, that's even scarier. It means I wouldn't want to send a child to, to the local store. Uh, certainly not at night. And, uh, I mean, you, 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 there's no such thing as safety or security at all. No, and the whole thing is, I look at it this way. If the government knows or is working with them for technology or doing what they... I could see the government being involved in the standpoint. If they know they can't do anything to stop it, you know, they're probably thinking, oh, whatever we can get out of it is better than nothing. But it, it scares me if it is actually going on. They're powerless to help us. And I, I don't know if they're powerless or not. That's the big conspiracy question. Are they powerless or aren't they? And I'm of two minds about that. I think there's some collusion going on personally. Like what? Well, for instance, I mean, with a lot of sightings, the government seems to go out of its way to ignore them. When there was the... Um, sighting over the uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport. This huge thing was hovering above the ground there. People in the terminal saw it. Maintenance workers on the plane saw it. Uh, this thing floated there and then it suddenly shot into the sky and punched a hole through the clouds, leaving a nice circular opening of clear sky. And then when this was brought up to the, um, uh, uh, the uh, American... Um, Federal Aviation Administration, they said, it, no, they were not going to investigate it because it, it seems to pose no threat to air traffic. It's like it's over an airport in our airspace, and it doesn't pose a threat. And this sort of thing goes on again and again. So why is the government in denial about this? And yet recently we found out that there was a program called ATIP where the government spent some $28 million to ascertain if these aerospace, not aeronautical, but aerospace phenomena were a threat to um, aviation and our planes and ships at sea. And they concluded that they weren't. They didn't conclude that they didn't exist. They concluded that they weren't a threat. And the fact that they referred to them as aerospace and not aeronautical or aeronautics shows you that they think that they're more than just in our skies. They're also in the space around us. Yeah, well, you know what? I do feel they were a threat because I and they won't come out in a minute. But again, if if uh, people are disappearing and what I have research and i know you have probably researched it way more than me there is a hell of a lot of people disappearing in our country every year let alone canada mexico you know you name all the other countries i'm sure they got people just vanishing with no trace Absolutely. over uh, over a million people in america disappear every year annually or just about a million 
Out of that number, the FBI says that some 60,000